This is Fit Amputee, powered by James Robert Fitness. I'm with uh, Dan Hidecock for episode one of my first podcast. A uh, little background to Dan. Uh, he's a one-time Paralympian, uh, European champion in wheelchair basketball, and then also an online coach in nutrition and fitness. So I'd like to pass you over to Dan to tell him a little bit more about himself. Right, hello guys. Um, yeah, as as James said, I am a pro and Paralympic basketball player. Um, had a motorbike accident at the age of five. Uh, got in a condition called a vascular necrosis of the hip, which means my pelvis is dying at a very slow rate. Um, got told I wouldn't walk again, I'd be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of my life, and uh, decided that I wasn't having that. So. Um, Every time my mum used to go out the room, I would try and stand up and walk around my wheelchair and that progressed into staying behind at school and lying to my mum saying I was doing an after school club and using an exercise bike. I suppose that's where I got my passion for fitness and got my legs stronger and um, yeah, and it, it developed into me walking a little bit and then walking a little bit more. Um, I had a passion for everything, uh, health, fitness, nutrition, um, related from a very early age. I'm like, fascinates me. I'm a total geek on how, what you put in your mouth and how you train can like drastically improve the way you feel, the way you look, the way you perform, your quality of life. Um, and yeah, I got into online uh, training and nutrition um, a number of years ago. Um, I've actually been training people for fun for about 10 years and then I realized I wanted to start making a little bit of money out of it because it was taking up a lot of time and you know I I, I think if you if you love doing something and you, you can make a living out of it it's it it's a very uh, it's a very nice thing and it's a very rare thing um, these days so I that's the way I went with things um, yeah that's my story in a nutshell I hope I didn't ramble on too much then no no that's good so go on a little bit more, um, how did you get into wheelchair basketball? Right, okay, so when I started high school, I couldn't do football, cross country, rugby, cricket, all those uh, boring sports, no. Um, so I just used to sit in a classroom on my own and we got a PE teacher that was um, a basketball fan. He, he, he came up to me and said that you could play basketball in a wheelchair. And I was like, I didn't know whether he was taking the piss or, or what. Cause like, it was just like, didn't really know what he was talking about. And uh, two days later, he came and put a piece of paper in my hand. And it was the contact details of a local basketball team in Liverpool. Went along the next week. My granddad took me. Uh, and just saw all these crazy people whizzing about in all these expensive sports wheelchairs and I was there in a big clunky hospital wheelchair <laughs> felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb but I was absolutely hooked from the first day so and and it progressed from going there once a week to twice a week to um, looking for other teams to train with because I was obsessed with it then I got my own first sports chair that my granddad made for me in his back garden believe it or not and um yeah, and, 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 and here I am playing um, basketball in Spain at a pro level. So it's it's been a crazy journey, one that I never imagined would happen. Never thought this would be the outcome. But um, yeah, I just you know, love the sport and here I am. And then to carry on a little bit from that, um, obviously you've been in virtual basketball now for, let's say, a long 30 time. plus years. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm 34 now and I started when I was about 14, 13, 14, so let's say 20 years. Uh, how, how much has, say, the sport moved on? And so, well, Obviously from the chair point of view, how much has that technology moved on? Um, from a chair point of view, the technology has improved incredibly. Um, the actual design and the development of the chairs and all the really... Um, I mean, you, when, when you get to a high level, you're looking at to change the 1% areas and having a perfectly fitted chair that is perfect for you and your body um, and ultra lightweight and, and, and 
set up perfectly for you and the position that you play. It, it's it, it's crazy. If you can, if you, um, I don't know, maybe you could post a picture under the the the, the, the video or or this podcast of, of what Cheer used to look like, but they, they've changed dramatically, and and so's the price tag as well. <laughs> but. For the ones that don't know, I, I know personally how much some of them can. Can you give a ballpark, 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 ballpark figure for somebody that wouldn't that does not involve in the sport, so they know roughly okay. how much some of these chairs actually cost? Okay, so uh, twenty years ago, you're probably looking at grand to fifteen hundred quid, which was a hell of a lot of money back then. Now you're looking at six, maybe seven grand, fully complete with wheels. And you need to, ch- I mean, if you're playing at a high level or you're playing for, throughout the year at international level and going to all these tournaments and whatnot, you're probably going to have to change your chair at least, uh, sorry, at the most, every two years. Because Is it, it just the wear and tear, right? Yeah, yeah, just the wear and tear. Because uh, obviously, as, as we've mentioned, that the, the chair technology has changed, so has the game. Like... There wasn't that many people playing it back in in the in the days when I started, and it was a lot of. Uh, some people might hate me for saying this, but a lot of fat old men. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now you, you've got people playing pro, and there's a lot of youngsters, and there's so many more people playing it, and you've got real, real athletic people that are training full time. Real strong, real powerful, real explosive athletes. And and the chairs take a lot of, a lot more contact than they used to, so they don't last as long. Sorry, fat old guys, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then to move on a little bit from that, how, in a typical season, how many pairs of wheels would you go through that? Uh, generally, for for myself, I'm not too bad. Like, I'd probably go through. Two to three sets of tires, but wheels. I'm generally okay. I generally never get damaged wheels. Um, last season, I only played half a season through injury, and my chair snapped four times. So yeah, so if you like, they do take a lot of contact. Um, so yeah, it snapped four times in the space of like three months. So and then obviously at pro level, mm-hmm. do do you have a mechanic with that's with with the team full time? Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have you have a, a sort of a mechanic or somebody that's holding a spanner. <laughs> that, that they call a mechanic on paper, but no, yeah. Generally, teams have a, have a have a guy that services the wheelchairs and 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 does any work if needed. Um, and and generally they're fine. I'm just having a little bit of a joke because there there are some really bad ones, but um, yeah. Well, you'd rather somebody else does it for you, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I'd much, play, pref- I'm, I'm I'm much prefer right. that. I, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you now. I, I've played for 20 years, and I don't know how to change a tyre. I, I, seriously, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how to change... Sorry, you, you broke up a little bit then. Um, uh, like a lot of teams nowadays, they're employing more and more people that are bike mechanics because they know what they're doing with the tyres. Yeah, yeah, and it's all about like you know if if you've got um, maybe a key player or your star player or I don't know that that in the close game towards the end um, they need a tyre change and then some like you've got me on the sideline trying to change it. It's like game over. You're not playing again, mate. <laughs> <laughs> But you, if you can get somebody that can can change it within a matter of minutes, like it, that's what you want. That's what you need. So yeah. But for the guys that haven't seen that, it, it, oh, oh, it's probably a few YouTube clips. You, 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 you'd see people running on the court. That's what that's yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, it's like it's like almost like a Formula One. Like you, yeah. Um, I mean, most players, if they have a wheel, they, they have a third wheel, so it's a spur wheel, and you'll have somebody run on court, and it's like ten seconds, wheels out, new wheels in, job's done. And you can carry on. So, okay. So, the next one we'll look at is probably the fitness side of it. Mm-hmm. What, what's of all the elements within fitness? Which is the one you prefer the most? Would it be strength and conditioning and nutrition, things like that? Which is your favourite? 
Oh God, well, in terms of nutrition, I love to eat, so I don't know whether you want to count that. <laughs> no, but um, I, I love training. I'm a, I'm a training addict. Um, I'm, I'm one of those weirdos that loves to feel terrible in the gym, like, like I'm going to die. I love doing high intensity, high volume, like my heart's going to beat out my chest. I, 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 that's the type of training I love. Um, nutrition, yeah, I, I mean, it's just, I, it's just fantastic how making small changes to, 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 to your diet or what you put into your mouth, like can not only affect how you look and how you feel, like but affect how you, how you perform. And it, it's, it's a science, it's an absolute science and there's so many intricacies and I think at the, like at the moment, or especially over the la last years, the nutrition especially is such uh, an absolute minefield because you have that many people saying, you need to do this or you need to do that or you can't eat this or you can't eat that. This is bad for you. This is good for you. And, you know, like for, for somebody that doesn't know um, or, or is new to training nutrition, they're like, fuck, like, where do I, what do I choose? And it can, and it, I, I, I personally believe that somebody that's wanting to improve their health, fitness, nutrient uh, and lifestyle um, that want, that, that may be, explores the, 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 the possibility of going to a gym or working with a coach or a PT or looking to do something on their own. Maybe go on Google and like they're like bombarded with all this information. I think it can it, I think it sends a lot of people running and it because it's because it's like they're just they're scared of doing the wrong thing and they'd rather do nothing at all than try and, and do you know what people don't realise is like, you know, doing something is better than doing nothing. You know? Yeah, totally agree with that. Yep. Um, and then moving on from that one, in your opinion, uh, what's your thought on people, especially you see it nowadays with the television programs using their celebrity status to promote nutrition when they, well, in my opinion, you could say they don't know what they're talking about. What's your opinion on people um, like that? Uh, do you mean they don't know their ass from their elbow? Is that the type of, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Completely, I have the same sort of, um, yeah, so let's say, for example, um, people that have been in reality TV shows that then bring out fitness DVDs or diets or whatever that uh, close to Christmas just to, so they can make money. It, it, it makes me angry and it's a big pile of bollocks if you ask me. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing is, if that makes somebody that's not doing anything start going to the gym and working out of it, you, you can't really argue with that. But then, you know, if if they're sort of giving bad information or people um, are not really, um, how do I word this? If they're if they're giving information out and 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 putting themselves forward as an expert when really they they've not got no background or anything, I think that's wrong. But again, if it's getting people into the gym or getting people exercising, then you know the, the, there's two sides to it. But yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of, of of those type of people. I'll be completely honest with you. Okay, and then the final one I'll cover today is uh, I've seen that you're bringing out a book yep. uh, for wheelchair users. So mm -hmm. if you could tell us a bit more about that. Okay, so the story goes like this. Um, Last year, I had a number of, of, of wheelchair-using clients um, for, through online training, and I was developing some training routines, and everything was going fine. And then one day, uh, one of my clients uh, sent me an email. It was like, okay, Dan, you know, the training program's working great. I'm loving it, but my training partner, my, my friend who comes to the gym with me, didn't make it today, and I really struggled to... Um, uh, put the put the the plates on the bench press and then you know, and um, and there's there was one or two other things that I I struggled to do and it um, I ran out of time and it was just a bit of a ball ache, and then I had a similar situation with somebody else and I was thinking this is not good like I need to um, you know sort of reassess what I'm doing with wheelchair using clients because it got me thinking. Everybody has um, a varying amount of um, upper body strength, mobility, um, um, and and also um, some wheelchair users are, more, are willing to get out of the chair onto a bench or onto a machine. Other wheelchair users don't like that. 
and this is from my experience um, being involved in wheelchair basketball for 20 years and, and working with strength and conditioning coaches with elite level wheelchair users that don't like doing those things and you have the the the, the independence thing comes into play like you, you know a lot of wheelchair users don't like asking for help they want to crack on and do things on their own I'm thinking well how can I, I build a a system or a, tra a training program that is really easy to use, doesn't involve getting out of the wheelchair, doesn't involve using multiple pieces of equipment, um, that still covers the, um, a strength, hypertrophy, which is muscle building, conditioning for fitness levels, um, injury prevention, speed work, and, and whatnot. Um, so I did uh, some research and looked into things a little bit, and I came up with a system that only uses dumbbells and adjustable cable pulley, resistance bands, and a plate. So that's four pieces of equipment essentially, and um, it covers strength training, hypertrophy, conditioning, and speed and recovery injury, injury prevention type work. Um, and it covers 12 weeks. Every four weeks is a different phase. The, each phase is progressive from the last and has a different focus using a whole range of exercises. Uh, training methods, tempos, rest times, um, and yeah, I, I I literally had the idea to to do it, and I thought, right, I need to I need to put this out there. I need to put it into print, and I was like, well, you know, um, how do I how do I write a book? Like, like how do I do this? So I had to research how to how to um, put a book together, and I I, I drafted it out the, the structure wrote all the content and I did about 80% of it in, the, in in about a week. Um, I really like went to town and like spent hours every day and then I didn't go back to it for a number of months and it's only when I uh, hired my own business mentor that um, he put me onto somebody um, that he uh, used to help him get um, his book written and, and, and stuff and uh, got put in contact with a lovely woman to help me um, uh, polish things up, make it look a little bit better, make it read a little bit better. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically the story of how um, I went from an idea whilst I was eating my lunch to having a book that's due to launch in a couple of weeks and it's called Zero Assistance Resistance Training. And then for people that might be interested in that book, will it be available on Amazon and things something like along those lines? Yes, it will be available um, electronically and in paperback on Amazon. And I'm hoping it will be launching either the day before or the day of the Paralympic opening ceremony. That's that. That's that. That's the the goal, and um, everything's going okay so far. So. <laughs> So not too long away. Yeah. Go. Oh, so we'll touch on another topic. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with us both being from that Paralympic background, yep. how how are you feeling with it approaching approaching the games? Uh, it's a little bit of a. Hmm. Do you know what? Like, I for those that know me, like my my international career has been tainted somewhat. Some of it through my own fault when I was younger because um, I mean I could go on forever about uh, all the stuff that I used to get up to and you know I've never been a saint and you know I I, I have a bit of a tainted past um, but uh, yeah I, I went to London um, absolutely amazing experience and I, I was planning on um, Rio being my last and I was going to finish internationally after Rio Um and yeah, unfortunately, my my team wouldn't release me for a training camp at the, at the beginning of this year, and that put me out of uh, selection process. Um, which I mean, there's a bit of politics involved as well, but I don't don't really want to go into that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a little bit of a. I was upset at the start because I had in my head this was my last thing, and and to then get told it wasn't going to happen, I wasn't part of it. But it's not being part of it has opened a lot of other doors for me and, and, and I'm concentrating on my business and things are going well. And, you know, if I was part of the real thing, which would be great, absolutely great, but I, I wouldn't have had the time to work on the business and who knows, like, 
you know, I, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason and, you know, you, you, your life goes down a different path sometimes and at, at the moment you might think it's the, you might think it's a bad thing but as things unfold you realise it's for the best and I truly believe, for me personally, it's been the best thing for me to not be a part of it. But I wish all my teammates the best of luck. That's a good way, good way to finish. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll, we'll we'll call that on the end of the interview. Cool. No, thank you. Thank you for inviting me on, and it was a pleasure. No worries, Dan. <laughs>